tutorial. This tutorial is for anyone wishing to create genograms on GenoPro, whether you're a genealogist, social worker, or anyone who will generally be making genograms. This video covers creating a family, adding family members, creating adoptive and foster families, will cover data protection, and also genogram layout. But first, let's look at the GenoPro example. If we use the toolbar menu at the top, and find sample files, you can see there's a list there of different files that you can click on. We're going to click on Harry Potter's one and close this dialog box. At first glance, you can see that this is illustrated with pictures and red and green lines um, indicating different types of emotional relationships. GenoPro allows you to faithfully represent any group of people and how they are interconnected with each other. On the tabs at the bottom, you can scroll through to other genograms as well, which have a relationship with the first. As you can see, if I click on one of the hyperlinks, it takes me through to another the genome map. These are called genome maps. And this will help you accomplish making sense of extremely large and complicated families. Um, we'll get to all of these different functions in this video and in subsequent videos, but now for your genogram. GenoPro's menu and basic controls function in a similar way to Microsoft Office programs like Excel, and you'll quickly notice similar features. As such, there's more than one way to do anything on GenoPro, and you'll quickly find your preferred method. We're going to start by clicking on the new page icon, which is in the top left of the screen. And we'll maximize that as well. You can see that there is a starter genogram and a box of tips. You can look through that, but we're going to go straight to the family wizard at the top. It's indicated by a tiny little genogram with a magic wand on it, and we're going to click there. And you can see on this dialog box that there are space for names, dates of birth, dates of death, and a panel at the bottom that you can add children. So I'm going to populate that now. I'm going to add a child. I'm going to add a pet and change the gender option here. In this gender panel, you can see there's male, female, pet, and don't know. I'm going to click add. There are other gender options as well elsewhere in the program. And I'm going to put unborn and indicate that by don't know and click OK. So now I have two parents and three children. So we're going to click OK and that will populate our start a genogram. I'm just going to move this out of the way to create a little bit more space and bring that into the middle. As you can see, males are represented by a square, females by a circle, pets are represented by a diamond, and there is a don't know option which is represented by a question mark. As you just saw, everything can be moved around easily on the screen. Simply click and hold on any icon to move it around the screen and it will maintain its relationship with a parent or with a child and that relationship. You can also click and drag over everything to move it. This function you will use a lot, so you'll do well to get used to that. And you'll need it as your genogram gets bigger and more complicated. The next thing we're going to do is to add children. So we're going to make a little bit more space here. Again, we're thinking about our layout from the very start. So I can do that. There are multiple ways to add children to your genogram. First, you can click on this horizontal line and you can see an option to add a new son or a new daughter. Alternatively, you can click on the person with the child and it will give you the same options. 
new son, a new daughter. My preferred way is to right click and that opens up a menu. And as you can see, there is new son, a new daughter there. It also indicates that you can press S on the keyboard for son and D on the keyboard for daughter. And lots of the functions have those other shortcuts too. Finally, you can use the, by clicking on this horizontal line, you can use the icons at the top as well. You can see new son and new daughter up there. So there are mo multiple methods for most functions on Geno Pro. And again, you'll find your preferred method soon enough. Right, so I'm going to add a new child there. All new children, so the youngest children are always placed to the right. That's the genogram convention. You don't have to stick to that. That is what is generated. New partners. Mate is the word used in Geno Pro for new partners like husband or wife, etc. I'm going to use the right click to add a new mate for mother. And as you can see, that person has now been placed to the left. Males are always placed to the left and females are always placed to the right. If that doesn't make sense to you for the family that you're trying to represent, you can change things around a little bit to make it make sense to you. And I think especially if you're thinking about social work, if this genogram makes sense to someone looking at it that doesn't know the family, then you will have probably done the right thing. So it, again, it needs to make sense to you and be clear. You know, you're thinking about your layout from the very start. It's very easy for things to get messy, especially when you're thinking about really complicated family um, arrangements. Adding new mates is typically where the layout of genograms become tricky. So remember to save your work regularly in case things start to become irreversibly messy. Sometimes as well, it's easier to start again. You can check out our video on blended families for more detail on this. Um, and again, thinking about Geno Pro layout. We'll also want to add grandparents um, and the next generation. So to add an old generation, again, a few ways to do it. My preferred method is to right click, go down to new parents, and that will produce uh, two people up here. So these are now this child's grandparents. Thinking about the layout, and it's going to try and anticipate how much room you might need. How many aunties and uncles are there uh, for a child? How many brothers and sisters does the mother have? What are their partners like? Is this, do I need a lot of space? to cover a lot of different relationships or are there fewer siblings? What I would do is always leave as much room as you can and then tighten it up a bit later. Um, there is a zoom function as well. You can use it by scrolling your mouse or there's a little magnifying glass up here which you can zoom in and out to focus on different parts of the family in more detail. So this is all looking very blank, what we might want to do is thicken the stories of the people that we're seeing in front of us. And to do that, we can double click on them. You can double click on anything on this genome app and we'll explore some of that as we go through. But right now we're going to click on this person and that's a double click and that will open up a dialog box called individual properties and that will allow us to enter a lot more information. You'll find more gender options, you'll find significant dates, employment, medical history and more. And this panel is where you'll be able to change the colors of the icons in your genogram. Most of the information will not appear in your genogram. Uh, for example, I can type in a comment on here, click OK, and you won't see it on here unless I double click on this person once more. And you can see it. But just to think about data protection, especially if you are working in social work and you're recording other people's families, just because you can enter lots of information does not mean that you should enter lots of information. Think about these things. 
Why am I recording this information? Who has given me permission to record this information? And where is this information going to be stored? Always go for the bare minimum information that you need unless you have explicit permission to use more detail. Particularly social workers, if you're recording other people's families, this will be integral and you should consult your managers about what your protocol is in your organisation. Adopted and fostered children next. So GenoPro makes it easier to show that a child has been adopted and is now living with a new family. This includes fostered children or those in kinship care. So by right clicking on any child, we can then add new parents and that will bring up this dialog box. It says this individual already has parents. Would you like to create adoptive parents instead? I'm going to click yes. So even if it is a foster family, we are still clicking yes. You can see now that this line indicates that a child has been adopted and they have two sets of parents, this adoptive set and their biological parents as well. I can move this family on a, to a space on the genogram again, thinking about my layout all of the time, what makes most sense, and it needs to look right to you. If this is a foster family, I can click on this blue line here. Now this blue dotted line and these black lines, all the vertical lines are called pedigree links. Um, and if you hover over that, you can see pedigree link, colon, adopted child, pedigree link, um, pedigree link, biological child. So if we want to change that to foster, we can double click on that line and it gives us a new set of options in the middle here, this individual is a, and the drop down box lets us suggest a few things, either a parent, biological child, adopted child or foster child. So if I change it to foster child and click OK, now my line is a green dotted line. And when I hover over it, it says um, pedigree link, foster child. There are other options on here. Uh, depending on preference, you can make it a solid line. Um, as you can see, you can change the line color as well. I've just changed that to blue. And you can do that in line with your own preferences. You can also add the date of adoption or fostering as well. If there was a location, if there was an adoption agency, and other information as well. You can add pictures, we're not gonna cover that in this video, but you can. And then click OK when you are done. The next thing I would like to show you is with pets. So pets are always, if I double click on that pedigree link, denoted by being adopted because we didn't give birth to them. So they are classed as adopted children as well, people that you've adopted. Next, we're gonna look at the family properties box. So the family properties you access by clicking, double clicking on the horizontal line. If I double click on that, you can see it gives me some options here. There's a display text, so I can type in anything here, click OK, and you can see that whatever I've written in that box appears on top of this line and it has a relationship with that line as well now. I'm going to delete that for now. Then you have a relationship. So there are lots of different options for relationships and there should be something for everybody here. And there are also options for um, other family lineage to make things clearer. We're going to click OK. You can show when someone has died as well. So the, there are a number of ways to do that. Right clicking on that person and saying individual deceased. What that does now is put a cross in the middle of that person. 
but please be aware that some people may not like to see loved ones crossed off in this manner. It can cause an emotional reaction. So there are other ways to denote uh, individuals being deceased. Um, you want to, to think about what is right for the person in front of you or how you feel about it yourself. The last thing we're going to do in this video is to create twins. So I'm going to move these other two out of the way and we're going to make these two children twins. So if you do want to create them, you need to click and drag to select the children you want to be twins. And then if you right click, you can see that it says new twins. Again, multiple ways to do this. And now there is an upside down V denoting that they are twins. There is a little line also between them, uh, which talks about how they are twins. So if I double click on this, it will say twin link and it will give you fraternal or identical twins or unknown. So if we say they're identical twins, again, we can choose a line color and click OK. There's a space for comments, which won't be shown on the genogram. We click OK and now we can see that these two children are identical twins. It also works for triplets, etc. There's no limit to that for larger families. The last thing we're going to cover in this video today is how to create a legend. So to make sense of everything on here and what it means, you can go up to the top and click on this scroll looking thing here. It looks like a scroll of paper. This will produce a key that explains all of the symbols and lines included in your genogram. This does not automatically update. So if you add new people, you'll have to delete the old legend and create a new one.